Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temur and I will be guiding you through this video. 38 magnets per model, 114 magnets for a single squad of 3. Grab your drills and stock up on the magnets, guys. This is going to take a moment. Over the course of this video, we are going to dive into magnetizing the Space Marine Centurions in a way that allows them to be used as either assault or devastator version with all the different weapon combos available. In the second part of the video, we will also take a look at how to still make good use of them in 9th edition, namely by including them in a Death Watch army. I don't know about you guys, but for me the Centurions have always been the kind of models that I wanted to have available, but also didn't want to overinvest in. The moment I realized that you can build both Assault and Devastator variants from the same box, I immediately thought of magnetizing. Good news first, I was a little surprised about this myself, but the difference between the Assault and Devastator variants does in fact come down to only a handful of parts that are the actual weapons. The bad news is that there are quite a few combos between the two datasheets. Before we get started, a quick word on magnets and equipment. As usual when magnetizing space marines, I used a hand drill, super glue, and a bit of green stuff where needed in combination with the magnets. For magnets, I use two different sizes. 3mm per 1mm for the bigger parts, this is my personal standard for magnetizing Space Marine's arms, and 1.5mm per 0.5mm for the smaller parts. The latter I generally use for magnetizing parts on weapons, for instance for swapping between the three different weapon profiles of the heavy intercessors. Starting with the torso mounted weapons, initially I considered not going for magnets and just fitting the plastic parts into the sockets. With primer and paint, I suspected they might hold on their own, but after a little stress testing, I went for the magnets after all. It would be unfortunate to lose these parts as they are quite small and hard to find. One thing I recommend is slotting the magnets before gluing the part to the torso. On my first model, I did it at the very end and I regretted it instantly. When dealing with the small magnets, I highly recommend marking one side of the magnets to ensure that polarization is correct, it's so easy to flip them by accident. All in all, two magnets into the Centurion body and three different loadouts with two weapons with one magnet each, so that's eight magnets. Moving on to the rest of the Centurion body, what I did was also magnetizing the arms at the shoulder joint. This is technically not needed, as we will see in just a moment, the cables will dictate the positions of the arms and weapons, but being able to move these a little has been a blessing for making sure that all the magnets fit neatly together in the end, also makes the painting easier. This is a fairly standard magnetizing job with the 3mm per 1mm magnets. Putting some green stuff into the torso helps to keep them in place. On the arms itself, we will need to socket another magnet that will attach to different weapon options. I recommend to center this based on the visible gap in the plastic. Picture included for reference. Once that's done, that leaves us with the cables. These are the same for all the weapon loadouts, which surprised me a little. You can glue one end to the torso, but at the other end, leading to the weapons, we will need a small magnet. All in all, between arms and cables, this will be another 8 magnets in total. For the weapons, let's first have a look at the Assault Centurion Siege Drills. 
For these, we need three magnets, a big one to attach them to the arms, and two small ones, one for the additional weapons, and the other for the cabling. This is pretty straightforward, simply check where the cabling and the additional weapons attach, then drill the small hole there, additional picture included for reference. Basically, we can either equip a flamer or a melter, both of them need a single small magnet. All in all, this brings us to 10 magnets in total for the assault weapons. Moving on to the Devastator weapons, fortunately they are simpler than the drills, simply because they only need two magnets each, a big one for the arms and a small one for the cables, just like before. However, because there are three different loadouts with two weapons each, this is another 12 magnets for all the weapons. Once everything is done, I recommend testing all the magnets first to make sure that they fit and that the polarization is right. In case of a misalignment, they can easily be removed again with a cutting tool. It would be a shame to only discover this once everything is painted up. In addition to the magnets, I also installed LEDs into my Centurions. For more information about this, feel free to check my guide to installing LEDs linked in the description. With the assembly out of the way, let's have a look at making good use of them in 9th edition. While they have been a true nightmare in 8th edition, the Centurions are one of those units that transitioned very poorly into 9th edition, no small thanks to not getting access to the core keyword. Looking at the Centurion Devastator squad, their main issue becomes apparent once you realize that the weapons are not included into their base cost. A squad of three equipped with blast cannons costs 330 points. For a slow unit without core and therefore missing out on the majority of the support buffs in addition to not having an inbuilt safe, that is just simply too much. The thing is, I don't think that this unit needs a lot in order to get fixed, points costs, keywords, that's about it. But as it currently stands, there are just too many better alternatives in the average Space Marine Army. But anyway, that's not the Centurions we are looking for in this particular video. Fortunately, now that we have magnetized our Centurions, we can run the Assault version instead. Here, things look a little better. While they also suffer from the same lack of core keyword issues, a squad of three equipped with siege drills, hurricane bolters and flamers costs 195 points, that's slightly above a Redemptor Dreadnought and more easy to squeeze into a list. As far as the chapter goes, I think both Raven Guard and Death Watch offer viable delivery systems to reliably bring these guys into close combat. In this video, as you guessed it correctly based on how I painted up my own models, we are going to focus on the Death Watch. Taking a look at their datasheet, they are slow and with toughness 5, 4 wounds and a 2 plus armor save, surprisingly vulnerable to anti-tank due to the lack of an inval save. This means that we want to bring these guys up close as fast as possible. For this, the Deathwatch Stratagem Teleportarium is ideal as it unlocks the Teleport Strike ability. As an alternative, we could also load them into the unique flyer of the Death Watch, the Chorus Black Star, but personally I am hesitant to offer such a juicy target. While the Chorus Black Star can be protected with a stratagem turn 1, there is still a huge going first advantage due to having to disembark in the second turn, so if I'm spending CP on this, I just prefer the more reliable Teleportarium instead. Once we deployed our Assault Centurions and are within 12 inches of an enemy, they can also double tap their Hurricane Bolters thanks to Rapid Fire still working for them at half range. As a friendly reminder, they are exempt from getting Bolter Discipline benefits when remaining stationary as per the Space Marine Codex. Another benefit of including them in the Death Watch is that they can get access to wound rerolls from Chapter Tactics. In addition, to this, while they are not core and therefore cannot get the 5 plus symbol bubble from the popular Dominus Siege's relic, they can get a 5 plus feel no pain from a librarian's fortified with contempt Xenopurge discipline power. 
While Deathwatch has been doing reasonably well in the competitive scene over these past few months, thanks to the rise of Dreadnought heavy lists, it is worth pointing out that also Assault Centurions have been successfully included into some of the more original lists. What stands out in particular is the Chilong 40k Town Open, where Darren Strew managed a respectable rank 7. In short, his list included several Proteus kill teams, three redemptions, a squad of Assault Centurions and even a Corvus Blackstar. I have done a more detailed coverage of the tournament and this particular list in a separate video, the link is in the description. All in all, what better time to get a squad of Assault Centurions magnetized and into the service of the Death Watch. To wrap things up, the Space Marine Centurion box comes with the possibility to build both the Assault as well as the Devastator version of them, with the help of a Magnet or 2 or 38 per model to be precise, we can optimize them in a way that allows them to be used as either Assault or Devastator version with all the different weapon combos available. Over the course of the video we have looked at where to install the Magnets and which size to use. While Centurions have not transitioned that well into 9th edition, there are still a handful of chapters, like Raymond Guard or Deathwatch, that can make good use of them thanks to their unique delivery systems. While in the Deathwatch, we can give them Teleport Strike through a stratagem, and they also benefit from chapter tactics and some librarian powers. All in all, what better time to get a squad of Assault Centurions magnetized? So that's it for magnetizing the Centurions and including them in a Deathwatch army. Have you guys been using these yourself or are you favoring other models instead? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.